is levels, right? So you, the first level is income. I just need to get income, so I need money. So that's level number one. You just need to get a job. You just need to make money. That next, the next level then is savings. I need to have, you know, the three to six months, or one thousand, whatever that number is for you, and then investing. So that's kind of like the stages. So you can't really, you can't start saving if you don't make money. You can't, you shouldn't really be investing unless you have um, some cushion there because investing is risky, right? You don't, it's nothing is necessarily guaranteed. So you want to make sure that you have some money to fall back on just in case you lose that income or that investment doesn't work out the way you want to. So. That's what I was saying. Yeah, they covered it all. Yeah. Yeah. So don't read those articles out there that are like five twenty six. You That's need to oh, have yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Or thirty. You need a hundred thousand dollars saved. I mean, they're really good rules of thumb, and if you can try to follow them, do so. But you know, you gotta kind of make your own path and do everything like that. Do we have any other questions? So I um, actually will go back to you guys. So what are some strategies that you guys have for investing in your 30s? Uh, so I'll make my investing down into pretty much two sections. Uh, one was being serious. And keep in mind, I'm not an investor in the sense as I'm watching the stocks trading every second. So no, I used to do passive investing. Uh, my favorite strategy is um, the DCA, which is a dollar cost average strategy. Uh, basically, to me, it says, I'm not watching the stock markets. I'm not really going to try. I'm just going to keep putting the same amount monthly, and I'm going to let it ride out. And usually, the markets will give a good return off of that. So that's my serious side. My fun side, that's what, do, that's what I'll do um, for a real estate investment trust. Every now and then, I might do a stock. And that's just how I break down my investing categories. Yeah, for being in your 30s and even your 20s, to me, I think the, the biggest investment, in my opinion, is like investing in yourself. Honestly, I think that's the biggest mm -hmm. win for you because that knowledge that you get is always going to, to last you for the rest of your life. And then as you're young, as you're starting to figure out things out, like so coming to an event like this and learning about those kind of things, you can try to start investing in things. But if you don't have that, that knowledge and if you don't have the, the mindset and the discipline or whatever to be able to, to start investing, then, you know, then you're pretty much out of luck. So I think I highly, highly encourage people to invest in themselves. Um, again, if you're working for an employer, even if you're not working with, with an employer, obviously looking into retirement, having that as a, as, a, as a baseline for your savings, putting some money into that, and taking advantage of that employer match, and then also the long-term compound interest that goes along with that. Um, so those are like the two biggest things I would recommend on people in their 30s to, to look into. And then also, too, one thing to note is that in your 30s, you have um, more ability to take risks. Too, because again, you, some of, some people in their thirties may not be married; they may not have children, so you can have take, be able to take on more risk, and then also, um, you're going to live longer, so you'll be able to bounce back from like a downturn or like a recession or something like that. So, I think investing in your thirties is all about your vision. I know that sounds kind of cliche, but by your vision, I mean figuring out exactly what it is that you want, because there's certain trade-offs, right? So. Maybe you didn't start investing until you were 35-ish. So now you've got to play catch up from everybody who started investing at 25 in order to make it to your number. So you've got to figure out what are your trade-offs. Are you not going to buy that new Mercedes because you know you need to save $600 a month? So it's figuring out what it is exactly that you want to have as an outcome. You know, Do you want to work until you're 65 or do you want to work until you're 45? So figure out what that is, figure out what number it is that you need to save to get to that retirement date and that number that you need to retire at. So I feel like it's just figuring out what it is that you really want and then working backwards to figure out how much you need to save and how much risk you need to take when you're investing. So I would just say start with the end in mind. And then um, actually have this as the last question and then I'll open it up again um, one more time to see if anyone else has questions. But how do you save while trying to pay off debt? Mm. I'll go back to that, again, the allocation. I think you should, no matter what, at least save 10% of your income. Anything that's coming in, you save that 10%. And then um, I would say use that excess money that you have to continue paying off that debt. That's my just general strategy for that. Yeah, um, I'll agree with that one as well. 
Uh, just think about your goals. Um, so if you are very stressed and you want to get rid of debt as soon as possible, you know, I'm not going to knock it, but do 100% close to debt. If you're kind of okay with it, you might be able to do a good break between maybe 50-50, 70-30. Just depends on what you want to achieve. And then, yeah, just do it percentage-wise. Don't, don't forget to always save and pay yourself first. And don't forget that your 401k is an investment and it is a savings. So if you are saving there, then maybe you can take some of your net pay, which you actually get on your check, and put that towards your debt because you know that you're saving inside of your 401k. Go ahead. Um, is there such thing as a 401k if you're not employed? Or, okay, so you can like Google 401k and so that would yeah. probably be an IRA, IRA. an okay. individual retirement account. Okay. And there, of course, wouldn't be an employer match, but you can put up to $6,000, I believe, is the number uh, this year. Yeah. They got Roth RA, Roth RAs and then they got a five hundred three or something. It's it's a lot of yeah. yeah. It's a lot of. So we keep on saying, and I just to clarify. So we keep saying four hundred one ks. Four hundred one ks are specific to um, employers, or also like let's say you have an S corp. Not to get into that, but um, you could do what's called solo four hundred one k. But then yeah, there's different um, retirement vehicles. So the IRAs, the individual retirement accounts, you can open that up you know, today without an employer. Some of them do require like a, a higher minimum balance. Some of them want you to have like 10,000 to put up or 3,500, whatever those are. But um, you have the, the 4113Bs, you have the 401Ks, you have uh, the IRAs, you have a whole bunch of different um, retirement accounts. So just, I guess, as you're doing your research, just look up retirement accounts. Don't, you could disregard the 401, okay. 401k okay. piece of that, so that's an employer that's specific to employees. Okay. Yeah. Um, quick question for the panel, because I know I get this question a lot, but people often wonder which one do you prefer, traditional IRA or Roth IRA? I, I personally believe um, I'm an advocate of Roth IRA. So Roth IRA is, is the retirement account that you contribute money into after taxes. So you have two ways to do. You have the traditional uh, retirement account or traditional 401k, for instance, and you're you have, let's say you put five thousand dollars into that, like every every month or whatever, um, or you put a couple, you, let's say two hundred dollars every month into it. <laughs> My five thousand. <laughs> 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 $100, alright? So $100 going into that thing once a month, alright? Um, <laughs> um, you could do that before before taxes, but then what happens is as you, um, once you're able to withdraw from that, that account, um, you're going to get taxed on that that, that, that number. And you, could, and you could start withdrawing, I think, I, it was like 59 and a half or um, I know, I know, you, hold on, I got you, I got you, hold on, I got you. <laughs> um, so then you get, you can start withdrawing from that, but then what happens is you're going to have to pay taxes on that. So um, considering where the country's at today, right, you know that more likely than not, taxes are going to increase. So um, by the time you're 59, tax, the tax rate's going to be higher, more likely than not. So it's a better, personally, I believe it's a better, um, strategy to pay the taxes now which is what the, the our, or what the Roth allows you to do you pay the taxes today and then you let it grow interest free um i'm gonna let these two say what they gotta say then uh, we get some well, i was gonna say is with the Roth, like you said you pay your taxes up front on your Roth. right so when you go to get it out later on it's tax exempt yeah just like exactly. with the life insurance policy so Roth is good if you want to when you get your money out later uh, if you yeah. want to be tax exempt yeah. go Roth or go with, with the life insurance and um, for me personally, I do a lot of that as well. Uh, to me, it's just more flexible too. Because uh, I, and I don't recommend this by the way, but I took out my Roth about maybe a year and a half ago, uh, paid off half my credit card, and I used the other half to stop a business. So it actually turned out to be a little bit of a good investment compared to a traditional IRA. You don't have that much flexibility. You also have something we call required minimum distributions. So I think it's like 870 and a half. 870 and a half, you have to start taking money out to be taxed according to the government. Even if you don't want to take it out, let's see, you just want to let it grow, government doesn't care, they want the tax money now. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of a little bit too restrictive for me. And uh, Jack, I'm going to have to ask you, are you familiar with the Roth IRA, the five-year rule? Okay, so I'm going to hook up with that one. 
as all know, this is like this awesome rule that I love. So I'll let you do that. <laughs> well, basically what he's referring to is what the Rocky said, so I went back and I took my money out. So what happens is all the money that you put into the Roth, you put all of that in there was after tax money, right? You already paid taxes on it. So the government says, okay, you can have all that money back. Do whatever you want with it. So you put $5,000 in it, and it grows another $5,000. You can take out all that first $5,000 that you put in it with no tax consequences. If you try to take out that other $5,000 within five years, you pay tax on that. So you pay tax on any of that gain. Is basically what that's saying. But if you have the same account, you hold it in there for five years to get that other half tax free. Tax free. I was sold honestly. I have a question. It may be along the lines of not annuities. Would annuity be in line with what y'all do? I don't do much with annuities, um, I mean, but it's an investment. I know it's an investment vehicle. Okay, then, just checking. I know it's more, I know there's annuities for insurance and yeah. I mean, I do advise on annuities, but. Not you like them, you don't like them? Uh, I personally don't really like them. Okay. <laughs> they're, I think they're a really expensive way to accomplish your goal, and I think there's other easier, cheaper ways, less complex. Like you said, read through everything, read through an annuity contract. You can't. You cannot. You need to be an attorney. I tried it. You can't. <laughs> so I don't want to invest in anything that I can't read. Yeah, so that's why I didn't. Are. Yeah. They're really high. Right. Uh, but the traditional versus Roth, my take is a little bit of both. Why not do 